Hi, this is Sue. I am doing short FAQ videos about Dutch Census work, and this one is about why are deep earthquakes important? Okay, so we will go to the globe here, and here's one example that's happened today. Um, for 4.5 at Fiji, and it's 404 kilometers deep. So just, um, oops, I did cross that there. Um, there we go, so 404 kilometers deep. And that is in miles, 251 miles. So now you can't feel that, of course. Um, so people don't think they're that important. Now, if I just put this graphic here, which Dutch Sense does. Um, now, I this is my crazy imagination after watching Dutch Sense's videos of what I think of this. I think of this as a lava lamp. So if you imagine a lava blob coming up to the top of the lamp and imagine there's a, the crust at the top of the lamp. Um, so in this case for us, the, the rock surface we have on the planet and the lava blob comes up and it nudges the crust and then it needs to push somewhere. It, the, the, um, the, uh, so there's got to be compensation movement from the deep earthquake. And then that's when you work out what happens next. Um, now, so this graphic of the blob here, you can sort of see uh, the surrounding area. It could affect, yeah. Um, now, uh, quite often we see that um, when one happens, uh, they tend to cause larger, shallower earthquakes um, and Dutch warns one to two magnitudes higher. So there's a potential of up to a 5.5 to 6.5 in the surrounding area. Now occasionally, sometimes it might actually shoot off and cause a large earthquake on where the arrows are suggesting. Um, uh, and, and it can be anywhere around really to, you know, quite a few hundred miles. Um, in distance. So they are worth watching out um, and the time scale it takes really, um, they can be up to three days um, or quite, you know, quite quick within that three, three days um, to cause a shallow one and then that's when you start working out the pressure of all the shallow ones that go and travel across the globe. Um, the letter D on the map is where they often happen. There are actually more areas, but it's just a case of getting this updated and, and checking it. But it's this is just kind of an, um, what we've noticed so far of where they frequently happen. Um, and then you can work out the arrows from these Ds. Okay. Um, so, and then if you follow the arrows, it goes right to the other side of the globe. And I think that takes around seven days, sometimes a bit more. Um, so that's how long Dutch's videos are working out from the deep earthquakes and he does his forecasts that way. Um, so yes, deep earthquakes are very important in a way of seeing where they are and then knowing when uh, and where the shallow ones will happen next. Um, so if you look at this one today that's happened, um, you can just check on the, the EMSC website um, and just see what happens in the next few days, and um, and then and then it's quite fascinating. Um, sometimes the deep earthquakes don't do anything, um, so there are certain locations where they just sometimes do something. And South Italy has a deep earthquake area. There's no D, but um, because it doesn't happen that often, but um, we noticed that sometimes it doesn't do anything and sometimes it does and it did last year in August. So, um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's a case of just noting where these D's are and then being aware that something might happen, something won't. I mean, it's, it's always just to good, good to be aware. And if nothing happens, then that's really good news, isn't it? So, but it's just, it's just, ordinary forecasting like you would for weather. Sometimes it might rain, sometimes it doesn't. Depends if it just rains off before it gets to you. So um, 
it's much the same for this underground weather, I call it. Um, so there we go, deep earthquakes. They are important after all. Thanks for watching.